Good morning, historic Mount Zion. This is Brother Larry Major coming to you from my home. And this Sunday is unique for me in many ways because I don't have my friend and pastor with me right now to guide me, to shepherd me through this video. So I want to say, Pastor, you miss, uh, but to the grace of God, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all of your gifts, God. And then that leads into the lesson for today. The lesson for today talks about the gifts of wisdom. The gifts of wisdom. And the song that was playing, it was titled, Where Would I Be If Not For Your Grace? Where would I be if not for your grace, God? Where would I be? So as we endeavor to get started, I want you to go into your closet I want you to get into the spirit right now so you can hear what thus saith the Lord. So where would I be? Let us bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day, God, to say thank you. Thank you for the many gifts of wisdom that you've given us that has gotten us through to this day, which is in the end, towards the end of June in 2020. God, where would I be if not for your grace? God, I could be dead and gone. I could be in the hospital suffering from COVID-19. I could be destitute and downtrodden, God, but you have me upright and in good health. So God, to that, I say thank you. God, this is what the world, at least the United States, is calling Father's Day. God, we know there is only one Father, and that's you. So we say thank you. So, God, as I endeavor to teach this lesson, please, God, you teach it, and you let me be the vessel that it comes through. So, God, again, I want to say thank you, and let the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, God. Amen. So, the gifts of wisdom. The gifts of wisdom, everybody, and as I was preparing for this lesson, I, I thought about it said gifts. It didn't say gift. It said gifts of wisdom. So, now... Obviously, it's talking about more than one gift, and so we're going to talk about one of those gifts. So, cause, all right. so the first thing, when we talk about gifts in the Bible, I'm sorry, wisdom in the Bible, as I scroll down here, wisdom in the Bible is mentioned over 234 times. Wisdom is mentioned in the Bible in every book of the Bible. 
if you go to different versions, and I'm referring to the King James Version, if you go to different versions of the Bible, it may be mentioned a little bit less. But for the most part, wisdom is mentioned throughout the Bible. So now, as you think about it, the Bible revolves around three characters, three characters. And, and the, the first lady of the ministry that I attend, Historic Mount Zion, for those of you who don't know, uh, the first lady, she calls the Bible our operating manual our operating manual. So now think about it. Three characters, and this is the operating manual. Those, those three characters, it starts off in Genesis, and it starts with God. And God says, let us make this stuff in our own image. So he had to have been talking to somebody. Who was it? It was Jesus, and it was the Holy Spirit. So now, as I think about the Bible, and I think about it being the operating manual, um, God in three persons was there creating the world. Um, and as we look at today's lesson, and we're talking about wisdom, excuse me, we're talking about wisdom, excuse me, I have to take a look at my phone. Um, wisdom was there while God was creating uh, the world. And, and some people, as we get into the lesson, some People say, well, maybe it was female women because it was personalized. Wisdom was so maybe women was there with God in the beginning. Think about that. So now, from God comes wisdom. It comes understanding, and it says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him go to God, and it shall be given. God gives us various gifts. If you go to Timothy, it said God gave some preachers, he gave some teachers, he gave some prophets, he gave some tongues, and he gave five different things to various people as gifts. But now here we're saying if any man lacks wisdom, let him go to God and ask and it shall be given. So it's not a special gift that God only gives to certain people like those fivefold gifts I just meant, I mean, just talked about, God has allowed us to get wisdom, and the only thing we got to do is just ask for it. Just ask for it. And, 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 and do we do that? So I, I'm going to pose questions to you throughout this lesson. Are we going to God and are we asking for wisdom, or are we asking for our health? Are we asking for finances? Are we asking for material things? as opposed to wisdom. And in one passage of scripture, it says, get wisdom, for wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom with all that getting and get understanding. So the two things go hand in hand, wisdom and understanding. And if you read Proverbs 3, it'll talk about that. If you get wisdom, you're getting some understanding. And as an engineer, I'm, I'm saying to myself, understanding of what? We're asking for wisdom, and when we get wisdom, we get understanding. Now, so ask yourself, what are we getting the understanding of? The Proverbs 8 has 36 verses. Uh, in today's lesson, we're only covering a small portion, but I would like to talk about the entire chapter, if you will, of Proverbs 8. Now, Proverbs 8, it starts off with a female. It personalizes wisdom. And I'll read to you what 1 through 7 says. It says, does not wisdom call out? Does not wisdom understand and raise her voice at the highest point along the way, along the way where the paths meet? She takes her stand besides the gate leading into the city at the entrance, she cries out, to you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. Hear what it says. It says, I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips 
detest wickedness. Those are the first, and that's coming from the, uh, the NIV, those are the first eight verses of Proverbs 8. And I, I, as I read those, I thought those were profound because now, again, wisdom is being personalized as a female and it's talking about that female standing at the gates to the city. She's crying out in a loud voice for us to hear her. She's crying out in a loud voice to everyone who wants to lend an ear. For those who have an ear, listen to what thus saith the Lord. So she's crying out to us today, but I don't know if we're willing to listen. We're willing to listen to what wisdom has to say. So now as we personalize or personify wisdom, and it's in the, again, the, 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 the personality of a female, I submit to you, we're actually talking about Jesus. Because again, wisdom is mentioned all throughout the Bible. And there are three characters who are in the Bible mainly. You got God, you got Jesus, and you got man. You got us who are in the Bible. Then Satan comes in because he is trying to deter us. And we're going to talk about him a little bit later. So now we've got those first eight voice, or eight verses that we're talking about a woman, a woman at the gate, at the entrance to the city. So now, again, we're talking Jesus, and it's Jesus standing in the midst of us, raising his voice, saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's Jesus saying, hey, look, I've, I've given you everything. I've came and, and I've taken lashes all night long, so all you have to do is come to me and I will and, and take on my burden and I will give you rest. What is he saying to us right now? It says God gives instructions on how to love him and to avoid the perils and the consequences of life. And he also says this is what's going to happen if you don't love me. If you don't do what my will says in that operating manual, this is what's going to happen. So as we read through Proverbs, um, Proverbs is a good book. Um, I've had a pastor when I was up in um, Maryland who basically asked us to look at every day, every calendar day for a given month, and let's take June. And if it's June 1st, he said, read the first chapter of Proverbs. June 2nd, read the second chapter. So if it's 31 days, you will read the entire book of Proverbs. So I've done that. And as I've read Proverbs, the whole book is consumed with wisdom. It talks so much about wisdom because Solomon wrote it. He wrote much of it. Now, and, and we know that Solomon was the wisest man who ever walked this earth. Pastor had several men last night. And we were talking about the joys of fatherhood and some of the things that are in vogue now, Black Lives Matter, uh, some of the things that we've regretted in life and our, our best times in life. But, but we talked, one brother talked about Solomon and how Solomon, when he went to God, God said, so what do you, what do you want? And Solomon, did he ask for material things? Did he ask for females? No, Solomon asked, for wisdom. God gave him that, and God gave him much more. So that's one of the paths that we should follow. We should think about what Solomon did, and we should ingrain that in our thoughts and practice that in our life. Wisdom. So now wisdom is defined. In verse 32 and 33 of Proverbs 8, it says, now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. <laughs> Do not disregard it. So have you ever thought about the word wisdom? Wisdom is a contraction of two words, two terms, if you will. Wise and dumb. Dumb being D-O-M, being a suffix. 
Wise, first off, as we know it, said wise is an adjective talking about the power of discernment, the power of discernment. And the suffix D-O-M from the Latin definition that I, I got, it says domain or jurisdiction. So putting those two words, putting those two terms together, we're talking about a discerning spirit that has a domain, if you will, for allowing us to get to another point in life, another place where we want to go. So wisdom, it says in Proverbs 3.13, it says, happy is the man, or woman, who findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. We have all, most of us, have heard and read Proverbs 3 where it talks about knowledge and understanding, and now it's saying wisdom, and it's saying happy is the man. Happy is the man. We know happiness is fleeting. Happiness is not mentioned uh, a lot in the Bible, but joy is. So now we're talking about happy is the man or woman that findeth wisdom and that get understanding. So it says also someone told me the other day, it said, what God gives, man cannot take away. Man cannot take away. If God gives you wisdom, man can't take that away from you. All we have to do is go to God and ask for it. But that's where many of us lack that understanding because we don't want to bow down to something or somebody, the creator, who is greater than us. It says the chief difficulty, though, when we get wisdom is to do what was said. One of, the, one of the brothers last night was saying that he was called to preach at an early age, or about 15 or so, but he, he shunned it. He didn't do what God asked until he was in his 30s. Think about what if he would have done what God said God wanted him to do at that early age when God was saying, accept what I'm asking you to do. So now the conclusion from what I'm saying here is that if you get wisdom, then that means you're going to be wise. Have you ever met a wise person before? I've got four brothers, and I, I think all of my brothers are smart, but I've got one in particular who's a wise brother. He'll tell you some things and in, in, and for me, I just sit back and say, wow, I, I, I never thought about it like that before. Have you ever met that wise person who makes you think they're not saying things that are profound, they're saying things that are rudimentary that makes you think, then that imparts a little bit of wisdom on you. That's what God does. He's, food, he's feeding you spoonfuls of wisdom at every given moment where you're asking him for it, right? It says in the last part of, um, of Proverbs 8, and I want you to hear what Christ is saying. It says, now then, my children, listen to me. Listen to the wisdom that I'm telling you. And it says, blessed are those who keep my ways, listen to instruction, and be wise, and do not disregard it. We can't disregard what God is saying to us, but we do it all the time. What is, what is God saying to us now as we go out and protest? What, are, what is God saying now to us as we pull down the statues that were, excuse me, representations of hate? We, we, we revered some of those statues, but now they're being pulled down because man is saying, no, that's, that's not who we want to represent us. So, again, back to wisdom and the gifts of wisdom. And I'm professing to you that as you read Proverbs 8 and, and look at the lesson, um, even though it personalizes wisdom in the form of female, in the form of a female, I'm submitting to you that wisdom is Jesus. Wisdom is Jesus. So now, as we look at Jesus being wisdom, in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 30th verse, it says, by his doing, you are in Christ, who became to us 
wisdom from God. Colossians 2, 3, it says, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Luke 2, chapter 40th verse, it says, the child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom and grace, and God was upon him. So that's what happens as we get wisdom and we remain on the path of righteousness. We as children of God, we grow in grace and we become strong. Now that's a testimony that should be in all of your all of your repertoires, if you if you will, because as we ask for wisdom and we avoid those potholes of life we should become strong in the Lord. We should become strong to what God is telling us to do. And, and, and we all have testimonies. We all have certain things that we've avoided because God said, don't do that. I, I, I hear people say it all the time. Well, it says, so the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said not to do it. That's because you're asking God for wisdom. So, be careful though what you ask for. So in the book of Proverbs, like I said, it, it, it talks about wisdom. It provides instruction. It provides instruction to parents. It provides instructions on disciplining your child. Now as a father, and it's on Father's Day, I ask you to read that because many of us aren't doing it, but that's a different lesson. So we find wisdom in, in various forms throughout the body, I mean throughout the Bible, says God's testimony in Psalms 19 and 7 has a way of making wisdom simple. It says we became wise when we studied the word and apply it to our lives. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. Your commands are with me and make me wiser than my enemies. And I, that I want to take a pleasant pause because it is Father's Day, and I want you to reflect on your grandparents, your great-grandparents. I don't think many of us knew them, but we know of their actions because we're here today to serve God. Our grandparents came to a land, actually they were already here, but our grandparents, some of them came to a land where they didn't know the language, they didn't know the people, they didn't know the climate, they didn't know a lot, but many of them knew of God. Many of them knew of the force that God is when he's in your life. Now, I want you to think about what our grandparents have done and what we are not doing. It says, what I've just read to you, it says we find the wisdom of God in his written word. Following God's testimony has a way of making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. God will allow those things that seem complex to become very simple when you go to him and ask, just like what Solomon did. Those principles that are in this operating manual, sometimes it seems like, I just don't understand it, God. Why, why are you writing these things? Why are you, I don't, I don't know what you're asking me to do. Back to the title, The Gifts of Wisdom, God will make those things simple. Our parents, our grandparents were able to have things simplified to them simply because they went to God and asked for wisdom. That's, that's powerful. I also want to read to you what it says in Psalms 119 and, 98, and verses 98 through 100. It says, I have more understanding than elders, for I obey your precepts. I have more understanding than elders, for I obey your precepts. My, this same brother who I said, who's wise, he's He's telling me about his grandson. His grandson is five or six years old, and he's asking his grandson certain questions. And the profoundness of his grandson's answers to him is, for him, astonishing. His grandson is telling him things that, wow, 
I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. That's what happens when we go to God and we ask for wisdom, the profoundness, the profundity, if you will, from the answers that we provide to people will put them in awe. Our grandparents did that. And our grandparents, many of them, our parents, had no more than a sixth grade education. My father only had a sixth grade education, but he worked for Capital Concrete back in the 60s, early 70s, and he became a supervisor as a black man at a place where there weren't very many blacks at all who were working. Sixth grade education, but he uh, gained a position of, of, of basically leadership in a company that didn't hire many blacks. Profundity, the profoundness of what our ancestors had, what they sought for, is something that we need to go back to God and ask. So it says, if we go to God and ask for wisdom, we can safely navigate pitfalls. That's how our ancestors basically broke the chains that bound them. That's how some of the men and women that you know you think should be doing bad because you have so much more than them. That's how they're breaking the chains that bind them, the gifts of wisdom, because they're going to God in earnest. They're going to God basically in, in love and in kindness and in, in, in asking God in humility for certain things. Specifically, they're asking for wisdom. So the lesson text, as, as I read through the lesson, um, what, what I, I gained from it is, again, it, it says those who ask for wisdom will receive it. Again, uh, what I'm also telling you is those, those, once we receive it, those of us will, who are willing to follow God's precepts, then it, we will benefit from what we're asking for. But those who are not willing Watch out. It says in Second Peter, it says, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that watched to her wallowing in the mire. That, to me, is a profound, <clears throat> profound verse, profound scripture, because when we talk about wisdom and the gifts of wisdom, God will give us discernment. But sometimes we will return, as it says in Second Peter, second uh, chapter and twenty-second verse, as as we go into or travel on the paths of righteousness. Sometimes we fall off, and we're just like the dog returning to his own vomit, and that's. <clears throat> That's something because, again, using family, I have one brother who is um, he's on drugs and he's fairly old and and he looks at me and when I ask why 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 don't you stop at your age and he said well if you think I could stop don't you think I would has he gone to God and asked it's that dog who's returning to his own vomit for those of us who aren't going to God and then doing what he asks. We're like the dog returning to its own vomit. It says, when we pursue wisdom, we receive benefits of discernment and good judgment. See, if I am strung out on something other than God, then I could go to God and ask for wisdom so I can avoid those pitfalls. So I get discernment and good judgment. Gifts of wisdom. Two things, discernment and good judgment. As we think about the pluralism of the gifts that's in the title, we just talked about two benefits, discernment and good judgment. It says, as, as, as we get these things, then we would avoid certain potholes. I, I was talking to a, uh, a pastor some, some weeks ago, and, and this, this pastor wanted to, to bring some things into the ministry to help out and, and, and generate revenue for the ministry. And, and, and as he was talking to people, he became a, a, a bit more leery and, and weary of what he should do. So what did he do? He went to God. He went to God and he asked 
for that discernment. He asked for that wisdom. And guess what happened? The person who was asking him to do this thing, she called and said, well, I thought about it. I don't want to do it anymore. He didn't have to go back to this woman and say, hey, I don't, I don't think we should do it because now is not the right time. She called him. So that was discernment. That was wisdom. That was a gift from God. So again, when, when you go to God and you start asking for things, then God will give you those things that you're asking for if it's done in spirit and in truth. So now as, as you read on through this, this chapter of Proverbs, I got to a point where it talked about what God hates. Hate, strong term. It says, those who fear the Lord, Lord, hate evil. It says hate. Hate, that's not dislike. Hate is far stronger than dislike. It says hate. And it says evil is defined as pride. We, we see a lot of pride coming in the media and in the airways today. Along with COVID-19, people are saying, I've found a cure. Take Lysol and drink bleach. Pride and arrogance not to follow what science is saying or going to God and ask is saying, here's what you should do. Arrogance, arrogance, corruption, lying. And it says, these things render man unwilling to humble himself and, and not follow God's instruction. Evil, evil is again defined as pride, arrogance, corruption, and lying. Are those things prevalent in our society today? All right. It says um, the lesson. The lesson refers to many people who have education, and and at times our education, <coughs> excuse me, can make us look down on those who are less educated. We we talk about our PhDs. We talk about our MDs. We talk about. Uh, ESQ after our name, Esquire. We talk about the master's degrees. We talk about the money that we make, which can lead to the pride, arrogance, corruption, and lying that God hates. And because what we do is we become puffed up with the pride because of those material things. But just remember what I said at the beginning of this lesson, those things that man gives you, man can take away. There's a song that says, you can't take away that from me. You, you can't take away the Holy Spirit from me. I can only give it back to God by not following his precepts. You can't take away the blessings that God has blessed me with. I can only give it back to God by not following his precepts. In Proverbs, in that, that 35th verse of chapter 8, it says, for though whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Did you hear me? Y'all th think again about what this, 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 this chapter of Proverbs is saying. It says, whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Now, somebody said in the Ten Commandments, it, it's when, it, when you talk about Honoring your father and, and mother, that's the commandment with basically a purpose or with a promise. Here's another promise. It says, if you find God, you find life and obtain favor of the Lord. So I want to go back to what I said the last time when I was teaching. This two terms are in what I just said. The Lord hate evil and finding life. Remember, if you turn evil around, you live. God is telling you right now, if you find me, you can live. Don't do those evil things, which is the pride, the arrogance, corruption, and lying. It says, blessed are those who hear the Savior's voice and wait on him daily. Wait on him daily through what? Through reading, through meditation, and through prayer. 
Jesus said in Luke, the 18th chapter, in the first verse, it says, men ought to always pray and not faint. It says, the children of the world, we, children of the world, we find all kinds of times to do certain things. Now, with the plague, with COVID-19, many of us are in our homes, and it's showing how people are running around uh, the house uh, for X amount of times and setting world records, how uh, people with their kids are finding certain things to do, painting, uh, arts, it, it, people are singing, people are doing various things. And, and again, it says the children of the world find time for vain amusements without neglecting what they deem to be the one thing that's needful, without neglecting, or I should say with neglecting, what they deem to be the one thing that's needful. We are neglecting God during this time. I submit to you the thing that will remedy this plague throughout the land is prayer. One pastor told me, he said, through prayer and supplication, we will all get through this. Prayer and supplication. I don't hear many of us talking about it, but the gifts of wisdom will give us a discerning spirit and through prayer and supplication, that's when we find God. It, it says that the man has many in, inventions. Man has many inventions. We, we invented the planes. We invented the trains. We invented automobiles. And what we're waiting on now, many of us, we're waiting, because you see it in the news, supposedly Russia has a... Um, a cure for COVID-19. Uh, what I saw on MSN, it says that uh, people are using steroids as a potential cure for COVID-19. <clears throat> Man is looking for a cure for COVID-19, but nobody's dusting off those knees and going to God. It says, as far as God goes, it says, seek him early. Seek him earnestly. Seek him before anything else. So on this Father's Day, I ask men, are we seeking him early? Are we putting our pride aside and our arrogance and our lying? Are we seeking him early? Are we having our kids, while we're all in the house together, a spirit of discernment, having us as, as fathers, having our children kneel down before God, in asking for a healing, a healing in the land, a healing from racism, a healing from poverty, a healing from the plague. It says those benefits can only come with holy wisdom. Proverbs 23 and 4, it says, labor not to be rich. It says, cease from thine own wisdom. Labor not to be rich. Gentlemen, men and women now, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do as a father is be able to take care of my family. I didn't want anybody to come to me and say, Mr. Major, you owe us. Mr. Major, you can't afford this for your, for your family, for your children. Those are things that I never wanted to hear. But Hear what thus saith the Lord. It says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. So now, as, as I endeavor to have those things, I wanted to climb the ladder of success. But as I've talked to many people I grew up with, a uh, friend yesterday, we were just reminiscing about how we grew up. And we said to each other, we never knew we were poor until, until we went out in the world. I was telling this one brother, I, I was kidding with him, and, and I'll kid with many of you, because you don't come from families, you come from tribes. You had so many kids in the household, you wondered, and, and there are many of you like that, because your parents, your grandparents took on other kids, other cousins, other people who were needy, children who were needy, they brought them into the household and they raised them. So that was the tribe effect, where there were so many people there that you had to sleep on the floor. But I tell you what, you had a roof over your head. You had food in your belly and you had clothes on your back. 
Nobody in that neighborhood was telling you you were poor as you were growing up. Cease not to be rich. Cease from your own wisdom. Cease from what it just talked about, the arrogance, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. Cease from that. In verse 19, it says, my fruit is better than gold. Yea, fine gold, my revenue than choice silver. So as you read verse 18, it says, riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. So what God gives is better than fine gold because it's righteousness. And remember, what God gives, man can't take away. Our grandparents knew that. Man didn't take away anything from them. Maybe man told them that they were poor, but you never knew it. Maybe man told them that they didn't have the certain finer things of life, but you never knew it because many of us long to be with our grandparents. I know I was one of them. Now, what does it say about Christ? It says, attend to the words of Christ, and he will give the most ignorant the saving knowledge of truth. The most ignorant. Those people who we look down on, who we consider to be ignorant, God said, I'll give them the knowledge of truth. All they have to do is ask for it. Again, wisdom in this chapter of Proverbs is Christ. So at the beginning of the lesson, I asked, what do we think the problem is? Because it says, in, in all thy getting, get understanding. Understanding of what? What are we trying to understand, everyone? And I submit to you, we're trying to understand the ways of God, the wisdom of God. God, if we ask him for it, he will give it to us. Solomon did it. Solomon, sorry. Solomon did it. And, and God, look what God did for him. Our grandparents done it. And look what God did for them. If we as a nation go to God and ask for wisdom, I submit to you, what would he do for us? We talked about various churches last night. We were bringing in racism, the white church, the black church, the yellow church. I'm saying there is only one church. If the church of Jesus Christ, if we in the United States, if we get on our knees with those gifts of wisdom, the praying, the discernment, if we go to him in all, in, in, in fervent, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, in James it says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So if we go to Jesus fervently and get that wisdom, just think how much better off we would be. So everyone, I, I thank you for listening. I apologize for, for some of the hiccups that I've made, but again, I, I, I praise you for your belief in God and, and listening to me today. So thank you and God bless you.